Bernstein. What would you do if you suddenly found yourself transported back to the days of slavery? It's one of the key questions at the heart of FX's new time travel drama, Kindred. You were an angel or something else? I don't know. Based on an acclaimed sci-fi novel, Kindred centers on a black woman who goes back and forth in time to a plantation in the 19th century and discovers the truth about her own family. We all have this unexplainable tie throughout time, space, and history where our, our actions have this domino effect on each other. And um, to see a show, to see a story that explores uh, someone who can go back and forth and weave through those connections is really beautiful. The series was filmed in Georgia on land where enslaved people probably worked. You could actually feel the history of the land. It was, it was really emotional. There were a lot of days where I got really emotional, where I felt my ancestors surrounding me. <laughs> that always sounds so like, whoo, to say, but it's, it's true, it's true. Series creator Brandon Jacobs Jenkins promises Kindred will give audiences a lot to think about. I hope that people kind of leave this with a deeper sense of um, why history is important and their history is important and why family is important, you know, and, um, and asking themselves hard questions about what it is to be a moral person. You're not crazy. Whatever this is, it's real. In Hollywood, I'm Douglas Hyde. Ahead in the next hour, GMSA Christmas less than two weeks away, so we're getting festive this morning with little help from the gingerbread man. Plus a downside to Christmas shopping that most people are not thinking about. It can keep the most wonderful time of year from becoming a dangerous one. And up next year, big year on the horizon for the Alamo Dome here in San Antonio as they stay busy with some electric events on the way. We've got a preview for 2023 in just a few minutes. Transguide, our problems remain out there at 10 and days of Vala. We'll get an update from Stephen Cavazos coming up. This morning on GMSA, a man in serious condition at, in the hospital after a nasty rollover on San Antonio's northwest side. We'll bring you the latest details. Plus, District 10 Councilman Clayton Perry is back in court today. We're going to take a look at what can happen next in the case. We saw a little bit of sun over the weekend, but this morning we are right back where we were before. Low clouds, fog and mist, but there is a strong cold front in the forecast. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning, rise and shine with us. You're watching GMSA on a Monday. It is December 12th. Happy Monday. Hope you had a wonderful weekend and, uh, you know, kind of looking forward to a little cool weather after the warm weather we had last week. True. Some of us are. Mike Ostrage is here with more on the timing of our next big front. It's going to be 36 hours. Okay. Yeah, give or take tomorrow evening, right around dinner time. And it was nice yesterday, though. You know, a lot of people were like, yeah, this is pretty good December weather. Yeah. When the skies cleared out, the humidity was low, and it was nice after having all those clouds last week. Now, like we were talking about, the clouds and the, uh, yeah, the fog has moved on in here. And sort of our, uh, our gauge, if you will, is the fact that we can't see the control tower out there at the airport. Visibility is just down to one mile, now down to a third of a mile there at Randolph, mile and a quarter. Uh, New Braunfels, half mile Castroville. So right around the metropolitan area, going up 35, out 10 and out to the west, you're going to run into uh, the thickest fog. It's not bad along the coastal plain this morning. This fog, Rock Springs now at zero visibility, and this fog is going to be sticking around for the next couple of hours. Mold is on the moderate side. Mountain Cedar is also on the moderate side. And with the front coming through tomorrow evening, it's probably going to be bumping that number up as well with those northerly winds out there. As far as temperatures are going to be holding steady this morning, with a couple of those sprinkly showers here and there, just the mist. I mean, there have been a couple of showers this morning, but not really anything to, uh, to write home about. 68 degrees then today at noon, and a high temperature today is going to make it up into the low 70s. So we're still going to be anywhere from about uh, 5 to 10 degrees above normal. Should be in the mid-60s right now. And again, a shower or two, kind of on the breezy side. Not bad, though. Then tomorrow, roughly the same situation. We go into tomorrow evening. That's when the front comes through. It'll finally feel like December and then some. We'll talk about that, how cool we're going to be getting and what's in store for the upcoming weekend. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, 
That problem on the west northwest side gone. Looks like it, Mike. Okay. And, uh, better news out there. So drivers, uh, you're in luck there. Ten days of Allah. We did have that pretty serious crash. We're going to get to that story a little bit later on. But that crash that happened early uh, overnight did actually cause some of the lanes there in the east and westbound lanes to be shut down for quite a while. Now you can see there that the traffic in both lanes is moving without any trouble. Just the conditions out there. Be on the lookout. Uh, crash was reported right there in the westbound lanes at days of Allah. But again, portions of the east and westbound lanes had to be shut down due to some debris being scattered on the roadways. So obviously a very serious crash that led to some slight slowdowns. But thankfully right now, as we give you a wide look at the metropolitan area, everywhere else it's just been pretty green and quiet. Now getting you to some of these travel times, it's pretty much the same story there. I-10 coming in from Seguin, you're in the green with the westbound lanes looking at a 29 minute commute, a little more than half an hour if you're traveling in from 87 and those northbound lanes from Lavernia and our friends down in Floresville, a 28 minute drive time to the Alamo City. So let's get a chew on rotation here. Instead of this shot at trans guy that we've been showing you for a while at 10 at Days of Zavala, there's 35 at Eisenhower where the commute is picking up just a little bit more. We'll watch the roads closely and as always, make sure you do the same. Mark Stuff. Stephen, thank you. And to recap all of that for you, new this morning, San Antonio police say a driver is in serious condition, have his car jumped onto and rolled over onto I-10 on the northwest side. Happened just before 3 this morning near the intersection of 10 and Days of Allah. The man was, uh, police say the man was driving on Hausman, jumped onto the highway, rolled across eastbound 10 through the median and landed in the westbound lanes. The man was later rescued by firefighters and police. He was taken to a hospital. So far, there's no word of what caused him to crash. This morning, the Bear County Sheriff's Office is mourning the loss of one of their lieutenants, Jeremy Payne, after he was found dead yesterday. A cause and manner has not been released by the Bear County Medical Examiner's Office. BCSO confirmed the news in a statement saying in part, quote, there is no suspected foul play. The family has requested privacy, end quote. Payne previously served as a president of the Deputy Sheriff's Association of Bear County. Payne was off duty at the time of his death. The FBI is hoping surveillance video will lead to the arrest of the suspects connected to a break in a secured tower site for a transmitter down near Elmendorf. Three suspects seen uh, walking around the site before breaking in and taking several items. If you recognize any of these suspects, call the Wilson County Sheriff's Office at 830-393-2535. Happening today, District 10 Councilman Clayton Perry is back in court for an arraignment hearing. It is related to the Class B misdemeanor charge for failure to stop and give information after a crash. This stems from a hit and run on November 6th. San Antonio police also filed an at-large case of driving while intoxicated against Perry. Also happening later today, Metro Health will begin tuberculosis screenings for students at Brandeis and Clark High Schools here in San Antonio. Comes after Metro Health reported a confirmed case linked to those schools. The confirmed case is from Brandeis. However, officials say that person had direct contact with someone over at Clark. Metro Health will be taking blood samples for this test. Also happening today, there is a community meeting for parents to get more information. That's at 6 p.m. over at O'Connor High School. Looking ahead, there's a lot of excitement building in and around San Antonio. The Alamo Dome is home to so many fun, electric and captivating events. And with the new year around the corner, a lot more is on the way. Richard Oliver with the Alamo Dome joined Leading SA this weekend to talk about a successful 2022 and more importantly, what comes next. Richard Oliver joined us and we talked about a lot. We talked about the multi-million dollar success that the Alamo Dome saw throughout the last 12 months. And we talked about all the excitement for 2023, all of the events, the sports, UTSA, the XFL. Here's a bit of our conversation. The Alamo Dome turns 30 years old on May the 15th of next year. So we have got a slew of things happening all year long. It's going to be outstanding. We thought 2022 was good. Let me tell you, we've got, of course, Royal Rumble, just that you mentioned. Everyone's just so excited about that. Ticket sales are through the roof. So if you haven't gotten your tickets, you better jump on that. The Spurs 50th anniversary game on January the 13th, trying to set the NBA record for attendance, 65,000 people. They're trying to get in there for that. The Warriors are coming to town, so that's going to be a great game. And, of course, we've named a couple of uh, the XFL Spring Football League. The Rock will be here uh, in the spring, certainly uh, kicking off that league. And also we've named two big concerts, Pink in September, the Red Hot Chili Peppers in May, and we've got a 
couple more that I can't tell you about just yet. We also talked about the Alamo Dome's 30th birthday, what the dome has meant for the city of San Antonio and what comes next. You can hear the full conversation right now. Just head to the leading essay section of KSAT.com. Of course, we have leading essay every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. So guys, we'll see you next Sunday. Back to you. Thank you, Max. Well, folks, there's still time to donate a new pair of shoes or socks to a child in need. The Shares of the Shoes campaign is coming to a close, but it runs through this Friday the 16th. You can drop off a new pair of shoes or new socks at any of the locations on your screen. All donations go to Zapatos, which works with schools to help kids get the shoes that they need. You can find more information on the KSET community page and on KSET.com. During this season of giving, several organizations are working toward helping families for the holidays. That includes Toys for Tots. Volunteers will be handing out toys this Saturday from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. The location will be announced over the next few days. Over 4,000 families are expected to get gifts this year. And time now, 608 and 60 degrees for now. Still to come on GMSA, Twitter Blue is back. We'll explore why it's coming out now while costing more money for Apple users. And it may not feel like it here in Texas, but two major storms are causing some problems from coast to coast this morning. Plus, Mike's here to tell us about some changes in our area next. In the meantime, we're still dealing with fog and mist this morning. It's a little bit thicker in areas. It looks like the ceiling has started to drop right over San Antonio International Airport. We actually saw specks of water on some of the trans guide lenses this morning. Be careful, as usual, you know how this goes after all of last week. Six twelve. Welcome back. This morning, winter storms are wreaking havoc on both sides of the country. Four feet of snow fell in parts of California, closing roads and leaving some drivers trapped. As ABC's Morgan Norwood reports, that storm is set to slam the Midwest and the South and possibly trigger tornadoes. Overnight, two major storms causing problems from coast to coast. In the Northeast, the first steady snowfall of the season, causing multiple crashes in Massachusetts. Police restricting speeds on parts of I-90. At least seven cars involved in one crash and one serious injury reported. In some areas north of New York City, more than a half a foot of snow coming down. It's really coming down here in Brewster, New York, off I-64. This truck stop's getting more active as the snow starts to accumulate on the roads. A far more dangerous system is affecting multiple states in the West. What's being called an atmospheric bowling ball, dumping heavy rain and massive amounts of snow, up to four feet in the mountains of Northern California, with blizzard conditions and avalanche warnings. Have you heard about the avalanche dangers? I know that it's still snowing up there pretty good. It does increase the risk of there being another one. In that same area, heavy winds sent power lines crashing down on or near occupied cars. Police telling drivers to stay inside until the proper crews can ensure their safety. The wind also forcing this ski resort in South Lake Tahoe to temporarily close. The ski lift swinging violently, winds gusting up to 60 miles per hour. Farther south, heavy rain triggering flooding. That storm now heading east. It could bring blizzard conditions to part of the upper Midwest by tomorrow and severe thunderstorms and possible tornadoes to parts of the south. Morgan Norwood, ABC News, New York. It's now 614. Let's go ahead and check back with Stephen Cavazos. Uh, you know, I haven't spotted any major problems just yet, but uh, obviously drivers want to be on the lookout. We did have a few incidents earlier this morning, one particularly off of I-10 at De Zavala. That has cleared out, and you can see 35 at Riddiman, even 35 at Walters is fine, but we also have a few droplets right there on the TransGuide camera. So just be mindful that some of the conditions you may encounter may not be the best, but still nothing too bad just yet. We get you to the map and all we see is green out there, but we haven't had a chance to talk about it just yet. Road closures. Let's talk about what's taking place here along I-10 over on the east side of Bear County. Now, this has been ongoing for quite a while, and a portion of it actually already wrapped up, but the work will continue this week. Uh, should wrap up on Thursday, December 15th. Again, that's just a portion, but bridge work will continue from the over in the overnight hours, 9 in the evening to 5 in the morning. That's when you'll see full closures of the main lanes in both directions right there at File Road. But hey, just got an update from our friends over at TxDOT. So grab your phones right now if you're at home and scan this QR code that will take you to our current list of closures. All you have to do is scroll to the bottom of the page. And I just updated that list early this morning. But because of that crash along I-10, didn't really have a whole lot to talk about in terms of the road closures. But there's plenty to be on the lookout for. So plan the commute ahead of time.
Thank you, Stephen. Yep, mm -hmm. that would be a good idea. Speaking of a commute, you might want to leave a little extra early this morning just because it's misty, drizzly, as you were showing some of the, uh, the specs on the trans guide cameras out there. There's some fog around the area as well, and it's it's also that damn cool. 60 is not bone chilling, but I mean, it's just all that, that humidity and moisture. Yeah, maybe a light, a light, like, you know, I was going to say windbreaker, windbreaker. rain jacket. Yeah. yeah, and and again, with the collar turned up because it just sneaks down the back of your neck. And then later on today, 73 or a uh, high temperature, so we're going to be anywhere from 5 to 10 above normal. A couple of showers out there, so rain jacket is probably the best bet today. And take a look at this Aww. little guy. Yeah, and that banner's <laughs> kind of in the way, but it says Merry Christmas. Love Cute little the guy. Picture. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Well, Thank you very much for the uh, the KSAC Connect picture right there. All right, this is what it looks like when you step outside this morning. And yeah, we've got mist and fog and still can't see the uh, control tower. That's kind of our, like I said, our measuring stick. Visibility is at one mile. It has dropped down to just over a mile at Port S.A., still half mile Castroville, third of a mile Randolph, and a mile and a quarter up the road in New Braunfels. A lot of thick fog out in parts of the hill country. Rock Springs right now at zero visibility and three quarters of a mile up there in Fredericksburg. So again, most of it is from 35 out to the west and to the, uh, the northwest this morning. It'll be sticking out around throughout the rest of the morning. Morning. Mid upper 50s, low 60s, 15, um, close to 20 degrees above normal in some cases. And the dew point temperatures are running neck and neck with the actual air temperatures. And that's why we've got some of this fog out there. And it's that damp chill, some of that mist, and this moisture just continues to get pumped on in here. Here's a long range computer model. And this is one of those that kind of colors things in with a broad brush, so it does indicate a couple of uh, showers around this afternoon. Yes, there'll be one or two of them out there. Same thing tomorrow. Uh, we'll have some mist and drizzle in the morning, a couple little sprinkly showers, and then also right at dinner time, as the front starts to move on through here, it's got a couple of showers, but notice how the majority of everything is well off to the east and to the northeast of us, well up to the north, uh, northeast of Austin. There is going to be the chance for something potentially severe up there, not in our area, though. We we will have a couple leftover clouds early on Wednesday, then things clear out very nicely Wednesday, Thursday, and most of Friday. But we go into Friday, and that's when clouds are going to start to work their way back on in here. Going to have a lot of clouds hanging around here on Saturday, a couple of showers Saturday, Sunday, and then going into uh, early Monday, a couple of showers as well. And temperatures around the country. Obviously, we are very, very warm. It is definitely cold up there to the north and even much colder. Look at that. Some of these uh, negative 24 up there in Fort Nelson, Canada, and some of that really, really cold air. There are some long range indications that by next week, some of that really cold air may start to invade the United States. So here's what's going on right now. This low is going to work its way across here. Too far to the north to really do a lot of good as far as a lot of decent rain, but this is what's going to tap into some of that colder air. Pull the front on through here late tomorrow evening or dinner time into the evening hours into Wednesday. And then notice how these upper level wind lines kind of stay further to the south so that cold air will push all that warm stuff down there to the south and we'll stay on the cooler side going into the weekend as well. Then again, we go into next week and here's that next batch of really, really cold air coming down here. And that looks like it is going to be sitting up there, at least in the northern portion of the country, and then starting to work its way down in here as we go a lot further into Christmas week. Again, that's the indication as of right now. A lot can change between now and then, but that's the the early start. And has my uh, clicker kind of frozen up on me? Let me go uh, do a couple of do a space bar for me, will you, Mark? Yes, sir. I'll and we'll uh, we'll see if, what we can get through here. So sure. and do the uh, right arrow key. That'll be the best thing. There's that colder air moving on in here. And there we go into the forecast today. Now you can space bar after this 68 degrees at noon. Cloudy skies, a couple of sprinkly showers out there and then I love doing these cues to him. 73, a couple of showers. And uh, going into tomorrow, we are going to have temperatures that will be about the same, about the same conditions as uh, today with a couple of sprinkly showers around here, mist and drizzle in the morning. And then we have the front moving through in the evening hours. Beautiful the rest of the week, and then more clouds over the weekend and much cooler temperatures. Thank if, you, sir. If that's the hardest thing I do all day, I'm, I'm doing pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> and, he, and he did quite well. Yes. Thank you. Engineer yes. Mark. Thank you. Yes, Thank yes. you very much. Just uh, you. glad to be nominated. 620, 60 <laughs> degrees. <laughs> and just ahead, an important deadline coming for Apple. It has to do with Europe and how we charge our phones. That's next in your consumer headlines. I'm getting back.
vaccinated with Prevnar 20, a Pfizer vaccine. So am I, because I'm at risk for pneumococcal pneumonia. I'm asking about Prevnar 20 because there's a chance pneumococcal pneumonia could put me in the hospital. If you're 19 or older with certain chronic conditions like COPD, asthma, diabetes, or heart disease, or are 65 or older, you may be at increased risk for pneumococcal pneumonia. Prevnar 20 is approved in adults to help prevent infections from 20 strains of the bacteria that cause pneumococcal pneumonia in just one dose. Don't get Prevnar 20 if you've had a severe allergic reaction to the vaccine or its ingredients. Adults with weakened immune systems may have a lower response to the vaccine. The most common side effects were pain and swelling at the injection site, muscle pain, fatigue, headache, and joint pain. I want to be able to keep my plans. That's why I chose to get vaccinated with Prevnar 20. Because just one dose can help protect me from pneumococcal pneumonia. Ask your doctor or pharmacist about getting vaccinated with Prevnar 20 today. And this morning's GMA First Look, an urgent search for a missing American student in France. It's not characteristic of Kenny to not reach out to us and let us know what's going on. Kenny Delane Jr., a 22-year-old singer at St. John Fisher University in New York, was supposed to return home this week from southeastern France, but his mother received a concerning phone call in late November from a college liaison. She had to file a missing persons report because they had not seen him in 24 hours. I'm not there. I'm here thousands of miles away. The last time his parents heard from their son was on November 27th. According to the family, he boarded a train near the university and headed south, his phone pinging along the way. If anybody has a way to help us and find him, help us. And coming up at 7 a.m., more on the investigation. With your GMA First Look, I'm DeMarco Morgan, ABC News. In your consumer headlines, Twitter subscription service Twitter Blue returns today and offers subscribers a blue check mark along with other features. Before getting a check mark, accounts will be reviewed to prevent impersonators. The service costs $8 a month. The clock is ticking for Apple now, facing a two year deadline to switch the iPhone over to a charging port called USB C. The European Union is giving companies until December 27th of 2024 to make the change to their data and charging ports. So Apple will be forced to ditch its lightning connector that iPhones have right now. We get to buy more cords. Yay. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, Google Chrome now has a passkey support, the tech designed by Google, Apple and Microsoft. The goal is to make logins easier, safer and phishing proof. Google's password manager can now synchronize pass keys across Chrome on different devices and with Android. And time now, 625 and 60 degrees for now. Coming up at 630, we're slowly learning new details about what happened during that deadly explosion on San Antonio's southeast side over the weekend. And now officials are confirming there was a fourth victim of that blast. And families of victims in the 1988 plane bombing speaking out after the alleged bomb maker is caught 34 years later, we're going to hear from them next. Fog and mist is a problem out there in some places more than others. You just see it hanging in the streetlights over the interstates around town. There's I-10 at De Zavala. Stephen Cavazos will have a traffic update coming up. And Mike will tell you when our next strong cold front will be here. This weekend is going to be much cooler in South Texas. We'll be right back. The man accused of making a bomb in one of the deadliest terror attacks on Americans in U.S. history is now in custody. I'm ABC's Elizabeth Schulze. The charges he faces coming up. Also this morning on GMSA, new details about what happened during Friday night's deadly explosion on the city's southeast side. And now officials confirming a fourth victim in the blast. We went through this all last week, and we're starting this week the same way. Low clouds, fog, and mist, but a strong cold front is going to sweep a lot of this stuff away, and it's going to be much cooler this coming weekend. Good morning, everybody. It is Monday, December 12th. Happy Monday. Thanks for joining us today. Hope you had a good weekend. And I know some people enjoyed, you know, the warmer weather right. last week, but now it's, you know, the turn for people who enjoyed the cold weather like you, yes, 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 indeed. So, you know, it's funny because yesterday was such a wow, look at how beautiful it is because it was every day last week the same thing. And now it's like, you know, this morning it's like, oh, oh look, it's foggy and misty <laughs> again. So, uh, but we will see a front moving on through here. And it's going to be in the next, uh, if you're counting, about 36 hours tomorrow evening, right around dinner time. There's all the uh, fog out there at the airport. We cannot see the tower, the control tower. So it is fairly thick. And we've got. Uh, 
dew points that are on the high side. They are running neck and neck with the actual air temperatures. 59 dew point temperature at 60, which means we've got relative humidities well up in the mid upper 90% range. Wind out of the east at six miles per hour. Still a mile visibility out there at the airport. Just over a mile Port SA, half mile Castroville. So a lot of very thick fog and these are only the reporting stations. It may be uh, thicker and foggier in some of the low lying spots. So just keep that in mind as you kind of go around the corner or something. Uh, Rock Springs at zero visibility as of right now. You valley just at one mile and there's obviously a lot of mist out there as well. Nothing really heavy enough to be picked up on radar. We had a couple little sprinkles. There will be a shower or two around this morning and then this afternoon on top of that. Not really a big deal though as far as rain. Mold is moderate and yep. Mountain Cedar, it made its yearly return late last week, and it's going to be obviously sticking around for a while. Cool mist, fog this morning. It's that damp chill out there, even though we're at 60, which is not bone chilling. Boy, with all that moisture, it just sneaks down the back of your neck. A couple of showers, low 70s later on today, and then tomorrow, pretty much same thing. Then that front moves through. Like I said about dinner time, and that's when it's going to start to clear things out. We'll still have a few leftover clouds immediately behind the front, but a lot of sunshine for the rest of the week, and it's going to feel like December. Will that last into the weekend? Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, what's the latest, sir? Well, you know, some of the mist and fog you were talking about. Mike, right here, 410 at Ingram, check that out. And we do have traffic picking up in both those lanes of direction, so just watch out there. Uh, of course, you see these uh, signs sometimes when there's some road work taking place. We want to make sure that we're giving crews plenty of room whenever they are getting some of the work done out on the roadways, working to make the commute a little bit better for the rest of us. So just again, with these conditions, just you can expect to see some issues out there if people are not being careful. But getting you right to our map, we continue to see just the usual situation every morning around this time. A little bit of a slowdown there on US 90 as you approach 1604 and over on the north side, a little bit of a buildup already if you're traveling along 281 in those southbound lanes uh, up towards 60 from uh, a little past 1604, pardon me. But other than that, it's just road closures to be on the lookout for. And of course, some of this fog mist uh, that Mike was talking about earlier. But thankfully, none of it has really impacted the commute just yet, but something to be on the lookout for as we get this new work week rolling. Mark stuff. Thank you, sir. New this morning, <clears throat> excuse me, arson investigators will be back at the site of an explosion on San Antonio Southeast side. So far, the death toll from Friday night's explosion stands at four. According to San Antonio Fire Department, the Bear County Medical Examiner's Office says one of the victims has been identified as 36 year old Roger Haran Jr. The explosion happened around 1130 Friday evening on South Preston near Highway 181. That's right across from K-Bar Services, which is a construction company. As of now, the cause of the explosion is still being determined. Topping your morning headlines, a major breakthrough in the long-running investigation into the terror attack involving Pan Am Flight 103 that exploded over Lockerbie, Scotland. The man accused of making the bomb that brought the 747 down nearly 34 years ago is now in U.S. custody, could appear in court as early as today. As ABC's Elizabeth Schulze reports, families of the victims who died in the attack are now speaking out. After an investigation spanning more than three decades, this man, Abu Aguila Masood, is now in U.S. custody facing federal charges. Accused of building a bomb that took down Pan Am Flight 103 over Lockerbie, Scotland. It was the deadliest terror attack ever on British soil, killing 270 people, including 190 Americans. Bert Ammerman's brother Tom was one of them. Everybody loved Tom. He had two daughters at the time, six and four, a wife. He was 36, young. He didn't get to live his life. On December 21st, 1988, Flight 103 was en route to New York from London, in the air less than an hour when an explosion brought down the Boeing 747. Everyone on board was killed, including a group of Americans from Syracuse University who'd been studying abroad. Debris scattering so far, 11 people on the ground also died. Families can't walk away from this. This has been part of the legacy of their loved ones and their growing up. Masood was at the time known as the chief bomb maker for former Libyan President Muammar Gaddafi. Stephanie Bernstein, whose husband Michael died in the attack, telling ABC News Masood confessed to the bombing, but to a Libyan authority, adding it wasn't clear that ever, ever we could get him. 
his extradition to the U.S. a major breakthrough. Catherine Turman, a former FBI assistant director who worked closely with the victims' families, calling it another step toward accountability, even after all these years. Now, it's not clear how U.S. authorities brought Massoud here to the U.S. He is expected to appear in D.C. federal court as soon as today. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Washington. A man in California recovering after a daring water rescue that was caught on camera. So KTLA News in Los Angeles reports that the man was rescued by firefighters from Orange County after getting trapped in the swollen Santa Ana River Sunday morning. So as you can see in this video, a swift water rescue team was deployed and secured the man, pulling him up to the bridge above. Storms in that area are being blamed for those conditions. 636 back here at home, 60 degrees. Up next, a tricky part to Christmas shopping is making sure the most wonderful time of the year isn't a dangerous one. We're going to have that safe toy shopping guide in just moments. The countdown to Christmas is on, and that means last minute shopping. Retail experts say parents will spend an average of $300 on their kids' toys this holiday season. But before you buy, make sure the toys are safe. Nancy Alvarez tells us what you need to know to make sure the most wonderful time of the year isn't the most dangerous. I want an official Red Rider Carbon Action 200 Joe Wayne's Ball Air Rifle. No, shoot your eye out. It's hard to say no, but many reasons why you should. <laughs> dangers can be found everywhere. First, know the classic toy dangers such as small parts, strings, projectiles, toxic substances, rigid materials, and inaccurate warning labels. I usually look at pieces that can potentially break or disconnect. Over the 30 years the Dangerous Toys report has been put out, one thing has remained consistent. Balloons cause the most choking deaths in children. More than 11,000 kids go to the ER each year from flying toys, darts and arrows should have suction cups or protective tips. Magnetic toys are popular, but if these magnets are swallowed, they can stick together inside a child's organs. Also, don't purchase crayons or markers without a clear, non-toxic label. Finally, pay attention when there is a recall for a toy. Last year, 14 toys were recalled and 10 million of those toys were sold in the U.S. You can check for recalled toys at cpsc.gov slash recalls. I'm Nancy Alvarez reporting. Also watch out for those small batteries. Tragically, there are an estimated 2,500 button battery injuries a year. Kids can eat the batteries, causing serious damage to the digestive system. Find the watch list for this season's 10 most dangerous toys. Check out toysafety.org or uh, cpsc.gov slash recalls. And right now on kset.com, we want to know what you think about the elf on the shelf tradition. The elves are said to be magical as they scout on kids' behavior for Santa and report back to the North Pole each night, returning each morning to a new spot. Now, it was originally a hide-and-seek game, but was morphed into something much more elaborate. Turns out many parents either love it or hate it. So let us know what you think and share your Elf on the Shelf pictures with us. I always had a lot of fun with that one. When my son was younger, my favorite one is I have a small copy machine in my office. Uh -huh. We put the Elf um, butt down on the copier uh -huh. and, and <laughs> made a bunch of copies and spread those <laughs> everywhere. And he's like, so the copy is like, it's his tushy and then he's kind of leaning over. <laughs> How cute. Uh, sitting uh, down on the copy machine. So that was that was our very creative. Yeah, uh, I bet that was his favorite. Don't favorite try that visit. at home. Oh, don't try that at home. No. <laughs> <laughs> Mess to clean okay. up, I guess, all the copies you made. <laughs> right. Okay, time now, 643. Let's head over to Steven. I don't remember the elf on the shelf. I never had that experience. My mom just said, if you misbehave, then you're not getting anything. Yeah, yeah, same Christmas, here. Christmas, so. <laughs> I was always, uh, the uh, mom was the one who told Santa what was going on mm -hmm. in the house. But I'll tell you what's going on with traffic because things are moving just fine right now. Night at Nogolitos, it is of course busy. It's that morning rush hour that we are seeing on this Monday morning. Obviously, the, obviously the commute, you can see some of the mist and fog that Mike has been talking about throughout the morning. But uh, none of it's really hindering the commute. Just something we want you to be aware of. Uh, taking you right to the map though, again, same issues, uh, same, uh, same story, no issues. But of course, slowdowns there along US 90 and the northwest side. So just watch out for 
for that. Even the long I-35 southbound as you approach uh, from 1604, approach 1604 from Live Oak, you will see a little bit of a delay, but also just plan your commute ahead of time. Want to give you a quick update on what's taking place tomorrow, Tuesday, December 13th. We do have some concrete work on Loop 410 over on the west side of San Antonio. It should be at wrap pretty quick. Um, Wednesday, December 14th begins at 9 in the morning, wraps at 3 in the afternoon. Expect to see some alternately alternating southbound main lane closures that will be right there from Culebra Road to State Highway 151. But you know where to find that information, ksat.com slash traffic. Scroll to the bottom of the page. You'll find a full list of the closures there. But right now, 281 at the airport. Uh, things are moving just fine for now. Back to Elf on the Shelf. I mean, people are super super creative when it comes to that they can be that's neat a little, a little interesting a little yeah yeah a couple of years ago Mis also the shelf was hanging around our house and yeah. it used to show up in the um coffee mugs in the the cupboard right, right there so you'd open when it up my, and it was right well there. when my wife would open it up uh, <laughs> oh. or, you know, or it would pop up right on her nightstand right there right she'd wake sure up in the morning so <laughs> I, now i want this experience i feel like i need this you're missing out yeah, yeah. yeah we have to I recreate it for the you shelf. they sell it with the book um mm -hmm. and, and like a packet like coles and, and, and it ain't, and it ain't cheap like. either no no no. it's like 30 35 bucks i yeah. think for the whole, oh for the I whole no idea. starter pack and it's a lot of work too to set these scenarios that's, up right it is a that's lot of work but the, that's part of the fun too uh, okay. that's true yeah hmm hmm Sounds like a challenge now. Sure. <laughs> also was once at uh, Experience uh -oh. the Elf on a Shelf. So speaking of which, <laughs> oh, if you don't sure. have snow, you can't make a snow angel. Oh, so yeah, on the flower. Elf on the Shelf has to improvise a little bit of flower. <laughs> That's good. I like that. So we'll call that Elf Frank. Frank and some flour on some foil. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much for the KSAC it's KSAC Connect picture. Easy for me to say. And the creativity with your elf on a shelf. All right, traffic is starting to slow down. Looks like I've got some flashing lights over there right around uh, 410 near 281. Still can't see the control tower out at the airport. Visibility has pretty much stayed the same. I'll drop down a little bit, though, in New Braunfels. Mile at the airport, a third of a mile Randolph. So if you're uh, heading on out 35, even going out 10 to the east side, you're going to run into a lot of this uh, fog and especially out in the hill country. Zero visibility right now. Rock Springs, three quarters of a mile, both Hondo as well as Fredericksburg. Temperatures are mid upper 50s, low 60s. We are anywhere from 15, um, close to maybe 20 degrees in some cases above the normal low temperature, which right now is at 43 degrees here in town. A couple little sprinkles out there. That's a 30% uh, chance for, again, some of that mist. There's, it's very, very fine this morning. Morning. There have been a few little actual showers that have shown up on radar. Not anything of any consequence, obviously. We will make it up to 68 at noon, and then we do keep the chance for a couple of uh, light showers around the area today. Just few and far between 73 for a high temperature, so 5, 10 degrees above normal for the high later on today. There's a couple of showers. Computer models are indicating one or two of them around this afternoon going into this evening. And then same thing tomorrow morning. We're still going to have all the moisture getting pumped on in here. And the front starts. Uh, this model wants to move the front through very quickly. Um, some models keep it later on in the afternoon, kind of leaning toward later on in the afternoon, closer to dinner time. But again, this one does have a couple of showers along it. But one thing to take note of is rain. We're going to be on the tail end of anything. Most everything is going to be well up to the north and east of us. And as a matter of fact, there could actually be some strong to potentially severe storms north and east of our area tomorrow afternoon. There will be some lingering showers in behind that or lingering clouds in behind that front. Then we're going to clear out nicely for Wednesday, Thursday. Thursday and most of Friday. There's the cold air six at Cutbank right now, and then we are 55, 54 degrees warmer than that as of right now. And the reason for that is here's the uh, upper level steering winds, the jet stream, if you will, the dividing line between the really cold and the really warm air. So that remains the situation through today into tomorrow. Then finally, this low, which is not going to be really close enough to do us any good as far as any decent rain, it's going to work its way across here grab onto some of that cold air, pull it on through here in the form of that front, and then it will be staying on the cooler side throughout the rest of the week and going into the weekend. We'll have a lot of sunshine, like I said, for the latter half of the work week, but then we go into the weekend, going to be a lot more clouds around here. 68 degrees today at noon, cloudy skies. 
couple sprinkling showers here and there. One or two few showers, 73 for a high later on today. Then tomorrow, pretty much the same thing. Front moves through later on in the day and the wind will shift around. We will clear out then for the latter part of the week. Temperatures will be closer to normal readings to Wednesday afternoon and then Thursday morning. But look at that by the weekend, only the uh, 50s and even upper 40s. A lot more clouds around here. Another chance of rain by the weekend. So it will be a chilly and damp weekend. Yeah, feel like December, almost Christmas. Feel like December, yes indeed. Thank you, Mike. Right now, 649, 60 degrees. And looking ahead, house plants may brighten your home, but some can be lethal. Tomorrow on GMSA, the common plants to keep away from your children and your pets. Especially this time of year. Oh, that's There's true. There's a big one. And if they don't cover, yeah. we'll remind you when yes. that piece airs. Yes. Uh, out looking at the airport across 410 right now. Can't see much of the lights over there towards the uh, taxiways. If you're watching GMSA. We're back after this. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the Northeast, many of us got our first snow of the season. What that will do to impacting travel and then looking across the nation, we are everywhere with blocked highways through the Rockies into the Sierra. Avalanche warnings. Uh, we're live around the country. And then inside the release of Brittany Griner, the tense negotiations to free her and how the WNBA star got back to the U.S. We're going to hear from the U.S. official who was with Griner on her journey home. We're going to see those stories and so much more coming up right here. On GMA. And before we go, the spirit of giving is in the air, and here's an easy way for you to take part in all that giving. Salvation Army Kettles are out and about throughout San Antonio. Local businesses and journalists, including us here at KSAT, are out ringing bells, raising money for families in need. No matter how big or small, every donation helps. So just an example, the Salvation Army says a $50 donation provides a homeless mother with three children a one night stay at a shelter, including hot meals. You can donate by scanning this QR code on your screen or by heading to KSAT.com. And speaking of Christmas and the holidays, today is time to celebrate a classic holiday tradition, building a gingerbread house. It's National Gingerbread House Day, which has origins in a Brothers Grimm fairy tale. So the tradition comes from Hansel and Gretel, of course, finding a witch's house made of gingerbread. After the story became popular, German bakers capitalized on the trend and gingerbread houses soon became a Christmas custom. So whether you bake your gingerbread from scratch or build your holiday house from a kit, Today is your time to shine. Let's take a look at a few birthdays today. We want to wish a very happy birthday to one of our very own here on the morning show, <laughs> GMSA editor Tim Stewart. <laughs> That's right. He turned the big 5-0 yesterday. Happy birthday, Timmy, my, my Star Wars companion. Uh, now, the question is, he edited, uh, uh, normally edits everything. Did he edit his own birthday picture? I don't know. Oh, Colin, he did not. He did not. Okay, okay, that's so good. He's surprised right now. Happy birthday, Timmy. And in case you're wondering, based on those pictures, yes, Tim is a fun guy. Yes, he, he is. is. I loved, uh, well, I'll say his Christmas outfit at the yes. Christmas party. Yes, was indeed. Very nice. He had yeah. bells in his beard. Yes, yes he did. Very <laughs> festive guy. All right, five till seven, back to business. Well, happy birthday, Tim. And let's get a quick look at that commute right now. 281 at Hildebrand. Not too bad as the morning is getting rolling. We actually made it through with basically just one incident, and that has already cleared out. But check out 90 at Loop 410. 281 at San Pedro. We've been seeing a lot of the uh, tra uh, trans guide cameras picking up some of these droplets. So obviously, mist and fog is what we can expect for the commute, as Mike mentioned earlier. But as we get a look at 10 Days of Vala, just busy traffic right now, and of course, that can always lead to some slowdowns and a few stalls. We see a few of that there along US 90 over on the far west side as you approach 1604 and even along 410 as you get closer into I 10. But really, that's always expected at this time. We're going to see slowdowns. It is morning rush. The commute is getting rolling, so we'll watch things closely, Mike. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah, a lot of mist and drizzle, some fog. Can't see the control tower out there at the airport. That's always our good uh, kind of measuring stick. Still one mile visibility out at the airport, half mile. Castroville, 60 degrees right now. We are going to make it up to 73 later on. Couple of showers. The front's going to move through tomorrow evening, so it'll be back to December, the latter part of the week. I know you're excited about that. Yes, because <laughs> it's December. That's true. Thanks for joining us today. Have a great day. GMA is next.